Hi, John Valvano here. Today we're going to talk about critical sections. The idea of a critical section is when we have a global variable that's shared between threads, we might have a problem. And in particular, if we have a sequence of access to that global variable, a sequence, a multi-step access, and one of those steps is a write, uh, we have a potential critical section. And there are a number of different scenarios that we're going to see here in today's lecture. The easiest one is called a read, modify, write. This is a multi-step sequence that is going to affect a global variable. In this case, it's going to be port F. Okay? Port F here is a shared global. It's a port, but it's still shared, and it exists in the global space. Uh, the main program you see toggles PF1, and the interrupt service routine is going to toggle PF2. And here's what can go wrong, OK? Uh, if we first execute this instruction, and then we execute that instruction, what we're going to have in R0 is the value in port F. Now, if the interrupt were to occur between these instructions, those instructions, or those instructions, in any of those three spots, if an interrupt were to occur, something bad will happen. Let's follow through. If the interrupt were to occur here, the next instruction to be executed would be there. And so what would happen is these instructions would be executed, and the value in PF2 will be changed, 0 to a 1 or a 1 to a 0. So assume it was initially 0, PF2 is going to be made a 1. But after the interrupt, we're going to return back to this spot. And if you recall, R0 already has the value uh, in it, which was the value of PF2 prior to the interrupt. So bit 2 of R0 is going to be clear. And so when it modifies bit 1 and writes this step here, 9, 10, at time 10, PF2 is going to be changed, even though the instruction here clearly only wanted to modify PF1. And so this is a read, modify, write global uh, mistake. And let me show it to you, and let me show you how to fix it. Okay. okay. Here is the program with the mistake in it. You see that it's going to access port F here in the main program using the shared global version of port F. So if we build download. Okay. Now you see the idea uh, of this program is in the interrupt service routine. We are trying to toggle uh, port F bit 2 three times. Uh, but something bad will happen. Let's go ahead and run it. All right. So I have it hooked up to my logic analyzer. And so we see the mistake that uh, sometimes it works. Let me zoom in. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. This is an example with it not working. Again, the idea was to toggle uh, PF2 three times. Here's the first toggle, there's the second, there's the third, but there's a fourth toggle that occurred in the main program after it was done. All right, so let's fix the problem. Uh, let's run it and we'll zoom out. And you can see that it happens quite often. And what was supposed to happen is this bottom PF2 is supposed to be toggled every, um, toggled three times every 10 milliseconds. Okay, stop. Go back and let's fix it. Okay. The way I'm going to fix it is I'm going to use the bit specific version of PF2 and PF1. See? And PF2 and PF1 are defined this way using the bit specific notation. All right, build. Build. Download. All right, let's run it again. 
Reset. All right. Single. And now we see everything works proper. And PF2 uh, properly toggles every 10 milliseconds. So one solution to a critical section is to remove the sharing either by using a local variable, if you can, or in this case, when accessing the I.O. devices, we'll use bit-specific addressing. Okay. Let's look at another example. This is an example you're going to see in Lab 3, and it's an example of a multi-sequence read coupled with a write in the, in the background. And so what we're going to have here in the foreground is a routine which is going to display the hour and the minute on the screen. So assume for a moment that the time is 1.59. So it will read the 1, okay, and it'll output the hour 1. It'll put the semicolon there and then put the 59. And now let's look what happens uh, if an interrupt were to occur between these two read accesses. Okay, so we're going to first read the hour, and it's going to give me a 1. So the uh, 1 will have been read. And now if an interrupt were to occur, and I'm over here, and it just so happens that uh, the seconds overflowed, and so the minute is now changed to a 0, and the hour is changed to a 2. It's now 2 o'clock. But I've already output the 1. So when I return back here, uh, it's going to output the minute that it has at that point, and it's going to get and display 1 o'clock, even though it's somewhere between 1.59 and 2 o'clock. I got the wrong answer. So this is an example of a multi-sequence read coupled with a write. So the solution to this is to make it atomic. And the easy way here is to disable interrupts. So if I disable interrupts before the critical section begins, and I re-enable interrupts after, what will happen is this sequence of operations, this reading of the, of the hour, is going to be atomic with reading of the minute. And so in this way, I've made the system atomic. Of course, I have disabled interrupts, and that's generally a bad thing to do, and so we're going to search for other ways to solve this problem. All right. Let's look at another problem. Okay. Uh, this is a little more complicated uh, in a sense that I'm going to um, have a situation here where I'm using a FIFO, and so this is a one example of a FIFO routine uh, that we saw in a previous class, and basically it's going to put data into a first-in, first-out queue. Uh, but in this context, what I have is the desire to put data from thread port A and also put data from thread port B. And so both thread A and thread B are both calling this same function. And I have a critical section around all of these globals. Uh, we see here that uh, we do a put on the we do a read on the on the put I, and then I'm going to do a write on the put I. And that's a read, modify, write sequence to the variable put i. And so what I don't want to have happen is to start accessing put i and then get an interrupt and have the wrong value. And so in this context here, uh, the put i it represents a shared global, uh, and this becomes a critical section. So that the, so that if these two functions both call this same routine, I have re-entered the routine. And so a more specific example of critical sections is this situation here called re-entrant code. In other words, this function has been entered once, and then it's going to be re-entered a second time. And to solve this problem, we like to use locals, uh, but I can't make put i local because it has to have permanence. So I have to make put i global. So the solution is to make the access to the shared global atomic. And I do that by disabling interrupts, accessing the uh, shared global, and then re-enable interrupts. Uh, but I have the problem, what, what if I have one critical section inside of another critical section? And so a more safe way to, to remove the critical section is to use a sequence uh, 
that not only disables the interrupt, which is what this does, it will first save the IBIT. So this particular implementation here will first save the IBIT on the stack. Turns out it's going to go right there. And then it will disable interrupts. And then at the end of the routine, rather than re-enabling interrupts, what it will do is restore the IBIT. So in this way, if I have a critical section that's nested inside of a second critical section, uh, this first critical section did indeed disable interrupts. And this one didn't have to, but it didn't know it didn't have to. And so at this point, it will remain disabled until it gets down here and it gets re-enabled again. All right. So in summary, what we've seen is whenever we have a shared global, we have a worry Will there be a critical section? And if we have a multi-sequence uh, access where that an interrupt can occur in the middle of that sequence, we have the potential of creating a, a, a situation where the data is not consistent. And so, uh, and we'll find out if, if there, uh, in all situations, there has to be at least one right. If uh, multiple threads are reading a structure, it generally doesn't get into trouble. But if one is writing and the other one is writing, or this one's reading and that one's writing, uh, we have a problem, potential problem. And we saw a couple of different ways to get rid of it. First of all, if we can, we'll remove the sharing. Uh, if we can make it local, that's fine. If, we, if it's an I.O. device, we can use either bit banding or bit specific addressing. Uh, and then if all worse comes to worse, we're going to just have to disable interrupts during the access uh, to that variable. All right. Uh, next, we're going to talk about uh, debugging and performance evaluation.